In this example problem, we're going to be designing a square tied column. Typically, we would need to first determine the loading that would be applied to this column. In this example problem, we're given our dead load moment, or our axial load and moment, and our live load, axial load and moment. So the first thing that we need to do is combine these to find our ultimate uh, factored axial load. So we're going to use the ACI load combination, so 1.2 times 300 kips plus 1.6 times 200 kips, which will give us a P sub U of 680 kips. And we can do the same thing to find our moment demand, 300 kip feet plus 1.6 times 100 kip feet will give us uh, 520 kip feet times 12 is 6,240 kip inches. The next thing we need to do is we need to uh, assume a column size. Um, so this can be iterative, uh, and as you design more columns, you'll get to know what, uh, what a good column size is to start with. Um, so for this column, I'm going to try an 18 inch by 18 inch uh, square column. And we'll see, uh, we'll see how that works to start. We will be using uh, a design guide to help us with our column design, uh, as shown here to the right. Uh, these design guides can be found in different textbooks, uh, so from the, the textbook from uh, White and McGregor, or uh, you can find them in several other uh, design resources available from uh, ACI and uh, PCA. So uh, the first thing that we need to do with our column is determine our gross area. So our AG is going to be our 18 inches times 18 inches which will give us 324 square inches. The next thing that we need to do is find our gamma factor. And our gamma factor relates the location of our exterior steel uh, to the overall column width, as you can see in the, uh, in the design guide there. So we're going to assume that our gamma is about equal to our 18 inch width minus two times two and a half inches, assuming that the two and a half inches is the distance from the outside of our column to the location of our, uh, our or the, the centroid of our tension and compression steel, and then divide this by um, 18 inches. So we'll get this to be 0.72, say this is about equal to 0.75, and now we know what design guide to, uh, to use for this column. You can see that this design guide uses a normalized uh, axial stress and normalized um, moment stress. So that's what we're going to use uh, or, or what we need to find first. So our phi PN over BH, uh, knowing or remembering that we want to design our column so that our PU is uh, less than or equal to phi PN. So we can plug our PU, uh, P sub U in here. Uh, so we'll get 680 kips divided by 18 times 18, uh, which we found 324. Um, so this will give us uh, normalized stress of 1 point, or sorry, 2.1 KSI. We can do the same thing with our moment. And uh, once again, plug in, remembering that we want to keep our um, design or factor design strength uh, phi mn greater than our mu. We can plug in our mu here and get uh, 6,240 uh, kip inches divided by 18 times 18 squared, 
and we'll get our normalized um, stress here to be 1.07 KSI. So coming to our plot, we can come and look for our 1.07 point. Um, so 1.0 is uh, this line here, which we can see on our uh, x-axis. Um, so 1.07 would be to the right of this. So we can see that we're outside of the bounds of our, our current curve. Um, so we need to increase uh, the size of our column. Um, so that's what we'll do for the next step. So here in our next step, we're going to try a 22 inch by 22 inch column. So once again, we'll need to find our AG. So 22 times 22 uh, is going to give us an area of 484 inches squared. Um, next, we can find our gamma. And once again, we're going to assume 2.5 inches from the outside of our beam to the center of uh, our longitudinal steel, longitudinal tension, tension or compression steel. Um, so our gamma is going to be uh, 22 inches now minus uh, two and a half inches times two, and then divided by 22 inches. So we have a gamma of uh, 0.77. So once again, we're going to say this is around 0.75. Um, so we know what design guide to use here. Um, then we need to find our normalized stresses. So our phi PN divided by our BH is going to be equal to 680. Kips, divide, which is our, our piece of U, divided by our gross area, 484, to give us a normalized stress of 1.4 uh, KSI. And then we have our phi uh, MN equal to MU, uh, divided by our BH squared, so our 6,240 kip inches, divided by 22 inches times 22 inches squared uh, to give us a stress here of 0 0.59 KSI. So we can now bring these two uh, stresses into our um, design guide. So we have 0.59 and we have 1.4 so we can come over and see where we intersect. And we'll see we, we intersect uh, right about at the rho g um, of 0 0.04 curve. Uh, so we know that we're going to use a rho g of 0 0.04 uh, for our column. So for us, we can figure out the area of our steel AS is equal to rho g times AG. So 0 0.04 times 484 inches squared uh, is going to give us an area required of 19.36 inches squared. Uh, so this is the area of steel that we need to provide in our column uh, to resist our axial load and moment combination. So we have three main ways that we can provide uh, the required area of steel that uh, we found in the previous step. Uh, we can either provide eight bars, uh, which would be two bars in each face. We could add another bar in each face to give us 12 bars. Uh, or we could provide 16 bars. Uh, so what we can do is we can figure out what the area um, of one bar uh, would be required if we had uh, each of these bar configurations. Uh, so first, our area of uh, one bar required for eight bars would be, so we'll just have our AS, uh, let's say eight bars, is our total area required divided by the number of bars required, uh, which would be 2.42 square inches. We can do the same for 12. 
So total area required divided by 12 bars, the number of bars uh, provided in that configuration, 1.61. And we can do the same thing with a 16 bar configuration. So total area divided by 16 gives us 1.21 inch squared. Uh, so then we can compare uh, what the closest uh, bar size is. Um, so for 2.42, it would be an eight, a number 18 bar, uh, which would have an area of 4 square inches. For our 12 bar configuration, we would need a number 14 bar, which would give us an area here of 2.25 square inches. And for 16, bar configuration, we can use a number 10 bar, which would give us 1.27 inches squared. Uh, so we can see that there's a big gap uh, between our uh, AS required for one bar and our AS available for one bar for our number 18s. Um, so we're going to say, or we're not going to use that configuration. There's still a big gap for a 12 bar configuration. Um, so our 16 bar configuration is our closest. Uh, so this is uh, what we're going to use moving forward for this design. Um, so you can see that I have uh, this design laid out uh, here. And what I've done now is I've found the um, spacing between all of our bars that's available. And also our new uh, distance from our outside to the center of our outside uh, layers of steel. Um, which we assumed before was 2.5 inches. Uh, we can see for this bar configuration uh, with number four stirrups. So this would be uh, number four stirrups and interior exposure 1.5 inch cover uh, would be uh, 2.635 um, inches. Uh, so we'll need to go back and uh, recheck our, our gamma next. Uh, so we can find our gamma quickly, and our gamma here then is equal to 22 inches minus 2 times 2.635 inches divided by 22 inches, um, and we'll get our gamma to be equal to 0.76. Um, so this is about equal to our 0.75, which is the design guide we used, um, so we're going to say we're, we're okay here. Uh, if our gamma wasn't um, within the, the design guide that we, we assumed, uh, we would have to look at um, you know, an, another design guide or whatever one was uh, more appropriate and uh, modify the design as needed. We next need to design our ties. For this 16 bar uh, configuration, we need to restrain uh, our center bars with our cross ties um, in addition to our, our outside ties. Uh, so there are two ways that we can do this. We can either have um, a kind of a rectangular hoop that can go around uh, like an option A, or we can use uh, cross ties um, as shown in option B. Um, our ACI requirement is that our spacing be less than the minimum of uh, the three values that are shown. Uh, so sixteen times the diameter of our longitudinal bars is equal to uh, twenty point three inches forty eight so times the diameter of our ties is 24 inches, and our B here is 22 inches. So we can see that the minimum is uh, 20 point um, three inches. So if we provide ties number four bars at 20 inches, uh, then we're going to satisfy this requirement. Uh, the last thing that we need to check is we need to make sure that uh, we have cross ties um, provided so that all our bars are within six inches of uh, cross tie. 
Um, so we would need to check the distance between here, uh, inside bar to inside bar, and make sure that that distance is uh, less than or equal to six inches. Uh, so on the previous slide, we saw that our center to center bar spacing is four inches. Um, so for us, we have our four inch minus uh, our bar diameter. So 1.27 inches uh, gives us 2.73 inches, which is less than six. Uh, so we're okay here. So that uh, concludes our design. Um, what we next, what we could do next is uh, go back and use our uh, uh, column analysis tool and plug in our actual section and make sure that all of our different load combinations uh, fall within our factored um, moment axial curve.